Hi guys, this is Dr. Margolin. We got an interesting question today related to the new studies regarding um, vitamin D2. What is it? How is it different from D3? Um, how it can be used? How it's helpful in the pandemic? And regarding melatonin. And that's the topic of today's video. Hi, my name is Michael. I'm a patient of Dr. McGollins. And I wanted to share with you this, um, this survey because I've um, been a patient of Dr. McGollins for like the last three years. And he has earned my respect, he's earned my trust. And I feel like I've made the best decision in the world to have him as my doctor. His staff, they've been exceptionally professional as well as himself. Any concerns that I have, they get addressed. And he, and he makes me feel like my health matters. Hi, my name's Sherry Hall, and since I've been coming here, um, I've been able to get up, do my dishes, um, do other things that I was never able to do until I started seeing Dr. Mark Golan. And today, I am 138 pounds lighter, and I'm using the walker, and I'm not in a wheelchair, and I'm tickled to death. <laughs> Thank Hi, I've been with Dr. Mark Golan since February of 2014, and I have gotten better relief of pain, more mobility, better quality of life, and I love the care here and the people here. They're all wonderful. I'm Kamala Fisher, and I've been coming to Dr. McGollin's office for a while now, and he has really helped me a lot with the pain management. I would recommend anybody to please come to him because he does do good with pain management. He can help you with anything. All right. So, um, in the first part of this video, and I try to keep it short, and even shorter than usual format, I'll try to uh, sum up some research evidence over the last, I would say, two, three months uh, on vitamin D. Um, again, you can refer to vitamin D video we made uh, um, recently. Um, and this video will clarify uh, the points we made and specifically about vitamin D2. Well, there were several studies, I'll just mention them. There was Indian study and sp Spanish study, so-called, and some additional data analysis that showed, in my opinion, very clearly that vitamin D has a clear benefit. As we've been suggesting, if you look at my video three months ago, I mentioned that in um, our publication in June, and um, which brings data even from May and April and so on, uh, we, we strongly suggested uh, optimal levels of vitamin D, which is not related to its effect on bones. It's actually related to vitamin D effect on the uh, immune system. As we mentioned in the past, vitamin D, it's not just a vitamin, it's in a sense a hormone. It has effect on your immune system. It boosts immune system. And the levels uh, for the proper immune system function should be higher, um, I would say high normal levels, not just the minimal levels to consider to be normal. Again, for details, go to my previous vitamin D video. Now, typically you are prescribed vitamin D3. D3 um, is great for chronic supplementation. Uh, remember that um, vitamin D is going through um, what we call uh, first pass or um, uh, liver pass, it goes, it's going to the liver, okay? Liver is like a big lab in the body that uh, modifies uh, different substances. And vitamin D is not an exception. Vitamin D3 going through modification in the liver and um, it actually is transformed in something we call the vitamin D2 or calciferol. It's the same thing vitamin D2. Now, why is it so important? Well, there was a study that checked vitamin D3, which usually is prescribed. Um, and uh, there was a study that checked vitamin D2, right? So one checked the vitamin D before modification in the liver and one checked 
after modifications in the liver and they both seem to help, okay? So if they both help, why do I need both? So the point is that in some people, liver is more efficient than the others. So first it may take much longer, uh, much longer um, to modify vitamin D3 into active uh, form, meaning days, maybe five days, seven days, depends on the person. And usually it's not an issue because we're talking about supplementing uh, supplementing um, vitamin D chronically, right? For just background um, body function, what we call for well-being. However, uh, the concern is that if you uh, get the virus and you low on vitamin D and you try to boost it, let's say taking 50,000 units of vitamin D3, and again, all everything I say, just an in information, always consult your physician before treating your condition. But let's say you do that. The point is some people may take five days to get active uh, vitamin D form. In these five days with the virus are very important, as you know from news and literature. So what can we do about it? And we're going to answer this question and also mention melatonin in the uh, second part of this video. All right, so now we understand what the question is. We have vitamin D2 and we had vitamin D3 that we discussed earlier. And we have a concern that maybe it may take a few days for vitamin D3 to be converted to vitamin D2. So how we can go about it? So the right question, obviously, is to talk to your primary doctor, get the right levels of vitamin D3. Maybe if you, if you have optimal levels that we discussed in the previous video, nothing else needs to be done. However, if you're low on vitamin D, and uh, recent data showed that, this, again, despite attempts to supplement vitamin D, 80% of African Americans, 8 out of 10, are deficient or insufficient in vitamin D. About 40% of Asian Americans are deficient or insufficient. And in certain areas, a lot of general population, regardless of your origin, is deficient and insufficient. And uh, I would say areas like Midwest, Ohio, um, is one of them. We, we're one of the cloudiest states in the union. Um, and generally, from my clinical experience, a lot of people are either deficient or insufficient unless they supplement it the right way. So what do you do in this situation that you're deficient or insufficient and you're concerned about the spike of the virus? So I'll just share my general uh, medical judgment medical knowledge. It should not be applied to any specific situation without consulting your primary doctor, but I'll tell you what makes sense. It makes sense for me to supplement vitamin D3, as we discussed, again, as per your physician, but it also makes sense for me to have vitamin D2 at home. So um, I would use D3 for chronic supplementation, and if you think you're exposed to the virus or you're developing symptoms of the virus and tested positive for the virus, maybe it makes sense for you to take D2 because it will give you immediate boost of vitamin D. Again, uh, this is general suggestion. Talk to your primary doctor. Okay, that's and that's a great question, by the way. Thank you about D3 and D2. And the last point uh, that I want to bring is melatonin. Melatonin, the good melatonin that you can get in any pharmacy very inexpensive and been used for a long time to boost our sleep. It's available over the counter. Uh, recent observational data, including uh, data from uh, Cleveland Clinic, uh, from some other hospitals and studies showed that people who take melatonin before sleep have low incidence of positive uh, COVID-19 tests. Uh, and this is statistically significant, and this is on thousands of patients. 
And uh, we, you know, we can speculate on how it works. One of the uh, suggestions that there is an interaction between melatonin and the receptor that virus uses to enter your body. Again, melatonin is a natural substance in our um, body, which is part of what we call circadian rhythm. Basically, everybody wants to go to sleep. Why, how, how, why our body decides we want to go to sleep? There are certain substances in our body that help with this cycle. Melatonin is one of them. Um, and uh, people used to take it like 30 minutes, 40 minutes before going to sleep. Um, let's say five milligrams, some people take more, some people take less, three milligrams. You know, you need to talk again to your physician. It's a fairly benign substance for many people. I like any substance, good to discuss with your primary. And you definitely sleep better in most cases, but it's not the point. The point is that uh, unless you have specific contraindications, if you take melatonin, you kill two birds with one stone, you sleep better, and you have low uh, probability of testing positive for COVID-19. So you kind of develop um, some age, some protective advantage, which, which is shown in observational studies. We, I would love to see double-blind control study. Not aware of any, but I think I, I, I see very little downside. Now, here is the point that I made in the last video, and I want to, um, to um, underscore. Vitamin D and melatonin don't go together. Don't take them together. Because melatonin may interfere with absorption of vitamin D. So here, the best way to take it, you take in the morning vitamin D, and again, D3, maybe it's under some circumstances, D2 as we discussed, you want to take vitamin D on full stomach, primarily with healthy fatty food, if you can, like omega free or whatever you choose, at least on full stomach, it's a fat soluble vitamin. And then you wait till night and 40 minutes before going to sleep, you take melatonin, but you don't take them together. And that's how hopefully you get the best protective advantage. Again, it's a great question. Thank you. Uh, and hope everybody stays safe and healthy and I hope um, uh, the pandemic uh, will uh, uh, be under control soon and uh, um, we'll hear good news. Thank you.